Given a set of points on a two-dimensional plane, a convex hull is a geometric object, a polygon that encloses all of those points. The vertices of this polygon maximize the area while minimizing the circumference. Here is the convex hull of this particular set of points. Note that if some additional points were to be included, then the covering area is reduced while the circumference is increased. Likewise, if some of the vertices of the convex hull are omitted, then the resulting polygon won't cover all of the points in the set. Welcome to Stable Sort. The convex hull has a wide variety of applications, ranging from image recognition in robotics to even finding an animal's home range in ethology. And in this episode, we're going to look at two different algorithms for calculating it. The first one is called Gram Scan, while the second is Jarvis March. Both of them are fairly simple conceptually, but there are a few implementation pitfalls that I will point out. Gram Scan algorithm starts by first looping over all of the points to select the one with the lowest y coordinate. This is the bottommost point, and assuming no collinear points, is therefore guaranteed to be one of the vertices of the convex hull. Of course, it could just as well pick the topmost or the leftmost or the rightmost point, but by convention it picks the bottommost. Then it sorts the remaining points, ordering them by the angle that they make relative to the bottommost point and the horizontal. You could see that the angles would range from 0 to 180 degrees, given that the reference point is the bottommost one in the set. Finally, the algorithm loops over those points in sorted order, effectively scanning in the counterclockwise direction. Each point is placed on a stack, but only if it makes a line with a counterclockwise turn relative to the previous two points on the stack. If that is not the case, then the previous point is popped off the stack. The algorithm continues popping points off the stack until the resulting turn is counterclockwise. In this example, points 2 and 3 were placed on the stack because at the time, the connecting lines were making counterclockwise turns. But point 4 creates a clockwise turn. So we roll back, popping off point 3, and then also point 2, until the resulting line is again making a counterclockwise turn. Point 5 creates a counterclockwise turn, so it's placed on the stack. Point 6 is then placed on the stack, since it could potentially be part of the convex hull. We don't know yet. But point 7 creates a clockwise turn, so we pop point 6 off of the stack, and so on until we finally get back to the starting point. Let's talk about some of the implementation details that you'll need to handle. First of all, to determine if it's a clockwise turn or not, you could use trigonometry to calculate the angles in degrees, and then compare them. But we don't really care what the actual angles are. We just want to know if it's a clockwise turn or not. To do just that, and save a few CPU cycles in the process, we can make use of a cross product. If you don't recall, the cross product of two vectors, v and w, calculates the signed area of the parallelogram that is formed if you connect the two vectors like so. If v is on the right of w, then the cross product ends up positive but if V is on the left of W, then it's negative. Technically, for the math purists out there, the cross product is a perpendicular vector whose length equals the area of the parallelogram, while the sign tells the direction in which it is pointing. But for our purposes, we just want to know the sign of the operation. Here are a couple of examples to illustrate how to go about calculating it, along with a few lines of code that takes to implement it. As you can see, it's a very simple calculation. This formula could also be used to sort the points. The only thing to be cautious of is handling points that are collinear. Since we only want to keep the peripheral points, make sure that your comparator orders the points from left to right when the slope of a line is positive, and in reverse when the slope is vertical or negative. This is a little tricky, especially when dealing with floating point coordinates. So take a look at the source code linked in the description. The first step of finding the lowest point on the y-axis takes order n, since it just needs to iterate over every point. 
Sorting the points in place takes order n log n, while the main algorithm takes another order n number of operations since each point is pushed and popped off of the stack at most once. Therefore, the overall running time of grand scan is order n log n, driven by the sort phase. Now that we've covered the Gram scan algorithm, we can talk about its cousin, the Jarvis March, which is actually a little simpler. It also starts off by finding the lowest point on the y-axis for the first vertex. But then, instead of doing any kind of sorting, it just loops through all the points again in a brute force way to find a point that makes the smallest counterclockwise angle in reference to the previous vertex. It simply repeats this iteration through all of the points until all of the vertices are determined and it gets back to the starting point. More formally, the running time of Jarvis March is order n multiplied by h, where h is the number of vertices. Of course, if the number of vertices is large, such as when you have all of the points along the perimeter, then the running time turns for the ugly of order n squared. By the way, the function for finding the point with the smallest counterclockwise angle is exactly the same as the one used previously that makes use of the cross product. As a little bonus, dealing with collinear points is also a little easier because here you just need to pick the point that is furthest away distance-wise without needing to worry about the slope of the line. Both Jarvis March and Gram Scan were invented in early 70s. But in 1996, a young scientist at the age of 20 by the name Timothy Chen came up with an improved algorithm that runs in order n log h. To keep the length of this video in check, I won't go into the details today, but there is a link to his paper in the description. If you'd like to see an explanation of it on this channel, please do let me know in the comments. I'll put together an episode if there's enough interest. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click that thumbs up button and thank you for watching.